In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd invite you to remain standing with me as we sing together our hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. On this Palm Sunday, we join God's people of old in crying out, Hosanna to Jesus, our King, a cry that means, save us now. We, like they, are desperately in need of the forgiveness and salvation which Jesus enters into Jerusalem to win for us. Let us confess our sins to God, trusting in his mercy for the sake of Christ. Almighty God, we confess our need for Jesus' saving work. By nature, we are sinful and unclean. We regularly fall short of your call to love as you have loved us. We have been selfish, proud, distracted, and short-sighted. Hosanna, we pray. Save us from ourselves and forgive us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, sent his Son into the world and directed him to Jerusalem to die for you so that your sin might be washed away. By his death, 
and resurrection, he has saved us. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for our reading. Our epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 2. St. Paul writes, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not re regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd invite you to stand once more for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now... My soul has become troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice has not come for my sake, but for your sakes. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated for our hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This week, our Lenten journey builds with anticipation as Jesus draws near to the goal of the mission for which the Father sent him to save his people from their sins. We have come to Holy Week. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem for the celebration of Passover. He rides into the city on a donkey in fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy, which we rehearsed earlier in this service. The crowds respond with shouts of praise. Hosanna, they cry. In fulfillment of Psalm 118, I'd like to share a couple of those verses with you uh, where we hear in Psalm 118, O Lord, do save, we beseech you. If you read those words in bold, do save, we beseech you, it sounds like Hoshiana, Hosanna. O Lord, we beseech you, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Everything is coming together. The king is on his way. And the long-awaited kingdom of God, his active reigning in the midst of his people, is about to come true. Jesus had announced it at the beginning of his public ministry. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand now the world will see what God's kingdom really looks like. Now at this point, I believe it's helpful to look back and think about what the people of Jesus' day may have expected the kingdom of God to look like. For first century Jews, the picture of the kingdom of God probably looked a lot like the reigns of King David and King Solomon at least the good parts of those reigns. At that point, they were an independent and prosperous nation. They won victory over their enemies in David's lifetime, and they enjoyed great peace during Solomon's lifetime. As people experienced the powerful teaching and healing ministry of Jesus, many of them assumed, rightly, that this was the long awaited heir, the one who would come in the line of David to assume David's throne. And as David had regularly had the Philistines' number in battle a thousand years earlier, so they were hoping that Jesus would have the Romans' number. Then they could be free. Then the kingdom could be restored to Israel. And then They could enjoy once more that peace that Solomon enjoyed in his era, that prosperity. Such would be the kingdom of God when it came, they thought. How about us? When you hear that language, kingdom of God, what comes to mind for you? Well, I think it's probably just a little bit more foreign for us, frankly. Uh, First of all, that that first part of the statement, kingdom, is a little bit foreign to us because we're Americans. We are citizens of the United States of America. We just don't talk or think much about kingdoms. We think about, perhaps, republics, democracies. Secondly, even though our culture has been heavily influenced by the church for several generations, It's also a pluralistic culture, and it's becoming less cozy with Christianity over time. It's likely that many around us, the people who live in our neighborhoods, don't think much of the kingdom of God or even recognize its presence at all, its works. How about you? Do you recognize, do you see the kingdom of God at work? in your life, in the world around you? 
Many Christians perhaps imagine that the kingdom of God is, is a ways off, that we're separated from it by space and by time. They think that the kingdom is primarily a place like heaven, far away, that we'll get to at some point after we die. When they hear Jesus say to Pontius Pilate in John chapter 18 that Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, they imagine that Jesus is saying that his kingdom doesn't have really anything to do with this world. We probably wouldn't say out loud that God doesn't care much about the things of this life, but sometimes we act that way. We treat our bodies, our time, our money, and our relationships as things that exist primarily for our happiness, rather than as instruments to be employed according to the will of our King. Our beliefs about God and his work in our lives become separated from our daily actions, our daily desires, and our attitudes as we convince ourselves at some level that the kingdom of God can, can wait for another day, that it's not of primary concern right now. Well, it turns out that that first century crowd in Jerusalem didn't have it quite right. And quite often, neither do we. Indeed, Jesus, the son of David, comes to be a different kind of king than David. The Romans weren't the problem he had come to solve. He had bigger fish to fry. The horrible guilt of our sin before God and its horrible way of separating us from God and from one another. The seemingly unbreakable hold of death the entire human race. The rule of the prince of darkness, a liar and a murderer of historic proportions, to confront these great enemies, the kingdom of God and its king, draw near. And that kingdom and its king don't just draw near for a time, but they intend to draw near permanently. For contrary to the assumptions of our day, our king and his kingdom have not withdrawn from the earth to a place in the sky far away somewhere. Rather, Jesus comes, he suffers, he dies, he rises again right here on our soil so that Satan's shadow kingdom might be overthrown and that his kingdom might take root right here on our soil, and even in our hearts. What does Jesus teach us to pray in the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come. Not just the final revelation of that kingdom when Jesus returns visibly on the last day, but the kingdom of God coming today, every time people hear his life-giving good news, the gospel, trust in his son. And this is a different kind of kingdom because it reflects the character of a different kind of king. The rulers of this age, for example, will exercise whatever power they have to maintain control, to get their way. Our king rules by setting aside his power and laying down his life for his friends and his enemies. The rulers of this age will spin the narrative. That's a fancy way of saying they lie. In whatever way serves their agenda best. Our king says before Pilate in John 18 that he has come to testify to the truth. And in John 14, he'll tell his own disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The rulers of this age will often surround themselves with the trappings of wealth and prosperity. Our king will be coronated by being lifted up on an ugly Roman cross. 
as he is humiliated in death. The rulers of this age will attempt to convince us that we should fear death and cherish safety and security at all costs. Our king will destroy death from the inside out so that we need never fear it again. And as his church, we have the privilege of living in the light of his reign and returning, returning to our identity as citizens of his kingdom. As he spoke the truth with love and boldness, so his reign is active among us as we speak his truth with love and boldness too. As he gave of himself to heal and to save others, so his reign is seen as his church lives generously to bless the people around us. And as the message of the good news of Jesus spread, despite the resistance of the rulers in the earliest days of the church, so the message of this king and his reign continues to go forth in this room, in our homes, in our communities, and in churches around the world, despite resistance. Our king arrives in Jerusalem. He makes his way to the cross for us. So return in the days to come to rehearse once again the news of the greatest love, the greatest victory the world has ever seen. In the name of King Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds today and always in Christ Jesus, our King. Amen. Having heard God's word, we have the opportunity to respond by making confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'd invite you please to stand as we confess the faith. We speak together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated once more. Again, welcome. Thank you for joining us in worship, and I do pray that God will bless our journey uh, this Holy Week as we make our way to the cross. Uh, a few things to bring to uh, mind today. Uh, this is the end of the month of March, and we are pleased and honored to uh, be able to emphasize the work of the De Pere Christian Outreach Food Pantry. Uh, you saw the barrel out in the narthex. Uh, thank you for your ongoing gifts to bless our neighbors in need in our community. Uh, that need uh, continues to be there, so uh, your gifts uh, continue to be a blessing in that regard. Uh, we do want to talk about uh, what's coming up in terms of Holy Week worship. Uh, this coming week, we will not have a Wednesday worship service during Holy Week. Instead, we will gather on Thursday, Maundy Thursday, uh, to remember the evening uh, where our Lord instituted this meal of the new covenant uh, in giving us his true body and blood, a meal that flows out of uh, that ancient celebration of the Passover, God's deliverance of his people. Now he delivers in a new way, and we have the opportunity uh, to remember that as we gather on Maundy Thursday at 6.30. Then on Good Friday, we have two opportunities for worship at either 1 or 6.30, so we'd encourage you to uh, take advantage of that and uh, gather as we consider our Lord's death, hear the words of the Lord from the cross, and uh, meditate on that great sacrifice, his great love for us. Uh, then on Easter Sunday, uh, we will have three services. You, uh, if you've received our email list, 
Uh, you've heard that change to our worship schedule. We will have our normal 8 and 1027 services, uh, but now we have also added a 615 sunrise service. Um, our 8 o'clock service basically filled completely up, uh, and our 1027 service is, is following after that and starting to fill up itself. So we wanted to open up another service, give as many people opportunity to gather in the sanctuary to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. Uh, so I'd invite you to join my family early in the morning <laughs> uh, to give thanks and praise to God for the gift of our risen Savior. Uh, 615, 8 o'clock, and 1027 are our worship opportunities on Easter Sunday. In addition, uh, we will have Easter breakfast available. There is the opportunity uh, at this time to still make reservations to be part of Easter breakfast. I know there's still room to do that. Uh, there's also uh, the ability to order uh, food and to receive it in a takeout fashion to enjoy it in your home. And all the proceeds of the Easter breakfast, it's just free will offerings for everything. Uh, and it all goes to support the work of our youth as uh, they prepare for things like the National Youth Gathering and other uh, things that, that we engage in life together. And so those were the, uh, the main items I wanted uh, to draw to your attention. Uh, if you'd like to beautify the sanctuary for our celebration of Easter by providing an Easter lily, for example, we'd welcome you to do that. This year we're inviting each person who desires to simply bring their own lilies. If you could bring those in, uh, for example, on uh, like Saturday or uh, like the day before Easter, that'd be probably the most helpful. And uh, that day we'll be beautifying the sanctuary and preparing for that celebration. So, uh, and then you would be uh, welcome in the weeks to come uh, to take that uh, home with you and enjoy it in your home as well. Okay, I'd invite you to take your announcement sheet home and keep track of uh, everything else that is uh, coming up as well. And may God bless our celebration of our Savior who gave his life for us and then took it up again that we might know him and, and find victory in his life as well. We pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you uh, for the gift of your church gathered both here and around the world. We pray that you would continue to guard and defend us, strengthen us, especially during this holy season, and allow our witness of the crucified and risen Christ to bear fruit in the salvation of many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all those who partake of our Savior's true body and blood, uh, that you would grant them grace in that eating and drinking, that they would receive the benefits of forgiveness and life that you intend for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, for all those who teach and all those who learn in the schools uh, connected to our church body, that you'd grant a grace to them. We pray for all teachers and all students in all of our schools, uh, both public and private, uh, that you'd grant your grace and uh, strength to all those who gather, uh, that our young men and women may uh, grow and mature in the true faith and in the knowledge of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the government and for all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they would use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you'd grant us grace as we serve in various occupations, that in our daily callings you would use us and bring blessings to our neighbors. Lord, we pray especially for those whose work is difficult and dangerous. We lift up those who serve in our armed forces. We pray for our local police officers and firefighters. And we pray for all those who put themselves, uh, especially in harm's way, that we might be blessed and, and enjoy 
the blessings that you intend for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that you would shine your mercy upon them and that you'd use us as the church to be a means of, of care and relief for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all those who are sick or injured in need of your healing, uh, that you'd grant favor to them. We lift up Dave's brother Bob in his time of need as he struggles with liver issues. Uh, Lord, we pray for our sister in Christ, Sandy, as she struggles and is in need of healing. Uh, we pray for all those whose lives are impacted in any way uh, by COVID. We lift up Herman and Shirley Gross, grant them healing, Father. We pray for Keith Vandehei, for Miney Lopnow, for Landon Dickey. We lift up Nicole Clevisall and Colleen Cummings. We pray for Caleb and for Cheryl, for Bob. We lift up Nicole and Robert. We pray for Bob and for Jack. We pray for Mark and for Jen, for John, for members of Bob Gauze's family, for Randy and Ella, for Jody and Howard. We lift up Becky and Gail. We pray for Alan, for Megan, and for all those who are in need, that you would grant them healing, Father, and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A Father, be with all those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose hope, but rely on your promise that you will never leave or forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray thanksgiving with those who rejoice in your rich blessings, Heavenly Father, that they would remember that you are the giver of every gift and give you heartfelt thanks. Especially we pray for those who celebrate uh, the gift of birthdays. We pray for uh, Lisa Becker. We pray for Dave Thompson, for Samantha Lambert. Uh, we lift up uh, those who celebrate wedding anniversaries as well, Chad and Lisa Cuso. Uh, Father, that you'd grant your grace uh, to all those who enjoy your good gifts in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other things that you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I would invite you to be seated for our next hymn. 